so you've got problems that require a lot of CPU horsepower, but you can't really offload all that to the GPU? Well, I've got the solution for you. Let's build a dual CPU workstation. All right, so this is the second video in sort of a series, a related series. This is the build video for the Z10PED8WS. If you don't know what that motherboard is, there's a video over in the hardware channel. There's a link to it below in the description. So we're doing a build video. I don't have the CPUs that I really intend to use with this. Uh, it turns out that, you know, for OEMs like Dell and HP, Intel will sell CPUs at a discount. And so sometimes we're able to get CPUs at a, at a discount. Intel also has this thing called the Retail Edge program. So if you work for Best Buy or Tiger Direct or one of those, or Newegg or, you know, anywhere, you can actually buy certain things at a very deep discount in order to help people with them and show them off and do things like we're doing right now with the video. Unfortunately, Intel doesn't really care about people on YouTube in terms of making them a part of that program. I mean, I guess a few people they'll send stuff and we were, in, we were as part of like the, the Intel box master thing, whatever. But for some reason we can't join the retail edge program. I don't know why it doesn't make any sense at all. So yeah, we just have to slum it with whatever we can get. And the only thing that I had on hand was a Xeon E5 1600 series CPU, which will do until we actually get this in the hands of where it's going and actually do some interesting stuff with it in terms of like scientific computation. But that's a video for another day. So until we get our Xeon 26XX V3 series CPUs, this will have to do. This particular motherboard is a DDR4 motherboard. Um, you pretty much have to use error correcting DDR4, however, and I would recommend registered ECC DDR4. Although the manual does say that it supports a couple of different kinds of DDR4, I could not get it to post with non error correcting DDR4. So there's, you know, LP DIM and some other options that are supported, but just good old fashioned register error correcting DDR4 worked great out of the box and so that's what I'd recommend that you do if you're going to build a machine like this. For the rest of the machine we used Corsair componentry. We're using an older AX 1200 power supply although we've got an RM1000i. These power supplies don't actually come with two 12 volt CPU cables to be able to run two 12 volt inputs but it was pretty easy to procure some extra cables. I actually got a, a leftover blue sleeved kit from an old build from a while ago so uh, we sort of cannibalized it and used it for this particular build so that we could have two CPU connections now for our test build we're only running one CPU so strictly speaking not required but it's going to get two CPUs probably just as soon as this video is actually posted uh, timing uh, what are you gonna do so for the case, we're also using a Corsair 750D. Now, strictly speaking, EEB, which is the form factor that this motherboard uh, is designed for, it's a 12 by 13 ATX-ish form factor, but it's called EEB. Uh, the 750D doesn't actually support EEB, or at least it doesn't say that it does. It is hard to find a good quality desktop case that's not the size of a Buick that would fit an EEB motherboard. But the 750D does it really well. The 750D is pretty much the smallest case that I've seen that is not super cramped that would actually fit a motherboard like this fairly well. In terms of how many three and a half inch drives you can fit in here, you can actually have both cages in the bottom, although I took one out just to have a little bit more breathing room. And uh, in terms of the front cages and in terms of very long cards being installed, not just graphics cards, but also computation cards as well. And then having a little bit of five and a quarter inch expandability in the top. The thing that I like about the 750D is that we do have three five and a quarter inch bays in the top. And so I can put a three and a half inch hot swap enclosure in there at some point in the future and do some three and a half inch hot swap bays that are externally accessible. So, so the 750D is not an unreasonably large case considering all the horsepower that we're cramming in here. And if I did want to cram four GPUs in here, well, it's certainly large enough for me to do that without the case actually also becoming unwieldy. I could also put two closed loop coolers in here, uh, you know, 120, 140, whatever, uh, for both CPUs. In this case, I'm just gonna use a, a simple tower cooler for right now, just to get things off the ground. Also for this build, I'm gonna use the Intel 750 NVMe SSD. Yes, this motherboard supports Intel NVMe SSDs. Now, depending on your particular configuration, and how you've got this set up. The PCI Express slot that you put it in may matter, especially if you end up only running one CPU with this motherboard. But I, I would, if you're gonna get this motherboard, get the Xeon E526XX V3 series CPUs. It's socket 2011-3. This is what it's designed for, running two CPUs. So you absolutely need to run two CPUs. But with the NVMe SSDs, I'm able to boot from it, install, run, everything's gonna run great. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and install Windows 10, cause hey, you don't even need a product key at this point, so 
you know, that'll work. But ultimately, this thing is going to be doing scientific computing and some number crunching. And so for right now, I've just got it booting into Windows and so we can run some benchmarks on it and say, look how fast it is. Oh my goodness, it's so fast. This is only a six core 3.5, um, but the 2600 series Xeon CPUs that I would like to run in this will be eight cores per CPU. So you'll have a total of 16 physical cores, but they're hyper threaded. So in terms of like looking in task manager or, you know, catting proc CPU info, you'll actually see 32 entries in there. The only real downside of this motherboard is that it's got four memory slots per CPU. So you've got to either run at not quad channel and to have room for upgradability later or run quad channel, but know that you have to take your memory out and put more memory in if you upgrade later. But considering that the motherboard's already 12 by 13 and it's hard enough to find a reasonable size case that will fit a 12 by 13 motherboard, I don't blame them for not putting 16 RAM slots on the motherboard. It would be hard to fit that many on the motherboard like this without actually, you know, making it larger, which would then make it even more difficult to find a case. So for right now, I'm just running two eight gig sticks. When I get the 2600 series Xeons, I'm gonna get two more eight gig sticks. So we'll have a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now it's not gonna run at quad channel because I'm only running dual channel with each CPU. So I may end up getting another 32 gig kit and have a total of 64 gigabytes, but this should make a really good workstation. The other thing that's nice about this workstation setup is that it's quiet. The fan headers on this motherboard really work best with PWM fans in terms of fine grain control. The control that you have in the UEFI is not as fine grained as, as what we've shown off on some of the other Asus like desktop boards, but it's good enough. It's good enough to do the job and it's good enough to have a workstation that doesn't sound like a server with, you know, a hundred decibel fans on it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this build, but I can't wait to swap in the CPUs and show you what we're going to get up to with this particular workstation. So if you're thinking about building something like this, or you're thinking about building a, you know, a beastly multimedia machine or a beastly, you know, video renderer, or you're going to do scientific computations or just run a lot of virtual machines on your desktop computer, maybe you're going to build a small business server. This would make a perfectly reasonable platform for a small business server that you're going to sort of DIY. Then head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. It would probably, you know, whatever build that you might do might look a lot like this. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you in the forums. Mm -hmm.